Welcome to the 24th episode of the Schaefer Creative Podcast. This is Conversations with Creatives. I'm your host, artist and animation director, Todd Schaefer. I've always admired people who find one thing to do in life, and they devote their life to doing that one thing well. And it's even more remarkable when in their twilight years, they still have the same spark of passion for their art that they did when they were younger. Maritime painter John Stobart is just such a man. In the previous episode, John talked about his schooling at the Royal Academy and the circumstances that led to his first sale as a painter. In this episode, John continues to talk about his career, and he gives us a window into the historical research that he pours into each of his paintings. And he talks about his outdoor painting series called Worldscape that was produced for PBS. John, uh, what got you into doing the wharf side scene in America? What 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 spawned that? When I, when I, I can easily remember that because when I came from uh, when I when I first went to Canada, it was on a on, on a test uh, trip. I'd never been on a ship before or anything, so I took the uh, an ocean liner, you know, Cunard to uh, Montreal from Newport and um, and uh, uh, you know I, I didn't have that much money and uh, but I had uh, enough to stay a couple of weeks and then come back on another ship and that's what I did by the way I have, I have to say that I had been by this time doing paintings for shipping companies in England that uh, had that sent calendars out each year. All the shipping companies did that, and that's one of the th- reasons that I knew about the shipping, and I knew about we all saw calendars in, in, on people's walls that uh, you know that were from the shipping companies, and they were pretty good on-site paintings, just like I'd done at Waterloo Bridge, you know. Yeah. They were knock out and little painting with a ship in a foreign port with a little help from the, the shipping company. They were very glad to give you photographs of anything you wanted, you know. And, and uh, so I, I did that. And, uh, I, remember, I remember you telling a story that you had painted this beautiful passenger ship and you took it to the company and they said, well, we're not really interested. So you painted out the name and painted in a different name for a different shipping company and well, took it. <laughs> what, had, what had happened is that they sold the ship. Oh, right. The week before, <laughs> foreign interests, which killed, which killed the idea of me even progressing any further with that. But amazingly, that particular one turned, turned out good because at the same time that ship was... Uh, Coming down the Mersey, um, uh, no, uh, uh, where I painted, I painted it in the Mersey, and, and where the uh, the Mersey Docks and Harbour Board Building and the Cunard Building, beautiful buildings on the waterfront, very spectacular background for the ship, you know. And then yeah. I put the Oriole, <coughs> I, the one, the one that I had got in the uh, in the in the, in the one that. That, that they'd say they didn't want because they'd sold it. That was an awful looking ship and it was a brand new one. But uh, and, but while I was there, I saw a fabulous ship over at the landing stage called the Oriole, which was owned by another company called Elder Dempster Mine. And Elder Dempster, uh, uh, I communicated with, and in fact, I took with my brownie box camera I took pictures of the one at the landing stage, enough to paint a picture of it. And so I was all set because it was actually there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I put that at the, I put that ship leaving in the place of the of the big one that wasn't going to be, you know. So I took it home and I scratched it all off, you know. And, um, and I put in the Oriole instead of the other ship. It was very embarrassing because when I did take the new ship with the Oriole in it, boy, did they buy it in a heartbeat, you know. And it was big. It was 30 by 50. 30 by 50 
inches. Yeah. And the, the, so this shit was quite big in the painting, and it was all had to be exactly right. And uh, I put the name, the new name there, and uh, everything. Well, uh, two years after they had bought it, um, but after I'd done other things for them as well, because this led always led to something else. One thing will lead to another. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, and it had led to me painting other pictures, but uh, but what had happened was that the. Uh, I got a call from them two years later, and, and they said, Mr. Stobart, uh, there seems to be another name coming through the <laughs> painting, you know, and it was this uh, awful ship that I'd painted underneath it, you know, and uh, I hadn't taken that off quite enough, and it had bled through the, the paint. Oh, and, that's oh, funny. Oh, I knew what had happened. Immediately, oh, I said, uh, I'll come up immediately, and I can uh, I'll get, take care of that for you. Uh, no problem at all. And when I went up there, they knew what had happened, you know. They were all guffawing, you know. They, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> These old, old, old guys, you know, they're all about 80. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So what what gave you the the idea to start doing harbor side scenes and scenes? Oh, of... that was it. I had I had looked in the in the um, and and when I was at the Royal Academy schools in London, I had I was very close to Christie's and Sotheby's. Both their sale rooms were within a uh, quarter of a mile of of the Royal Academy, walking distance. Uh-huh. Get there in five minutes, and um, so I uh, I used to go there regularly, and I noticed I was very attracted to paintings of farm scenes that had been done by artists who wanted to describe the the farm scenes in in the horse drawn era, you know, and this these were done at, at that time in the horse drawn era. And, and they were selling those, you know, that were, uh, you know, people die, you know, and then they, 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 these old pictures were ending up on the wall. And I thought, I thought that what I'd really love to do when I came to Canada, because I, I found nothing like this, there, you know, and I said I could paint all these American ports uh, in. in back in time at the height of the sailing era and do, do the harbor scenes with the horse and the cars uh, in the street, you know, and you've seen m- m- a lot, many of them, I'm sure, in yep. books you have. Yeah. That's where I got the, the idea. And, I, and it was very powerful because I had been really glued to those things, those farm scenes, and I, I felt that it was a wonderful thing to look back in time. And it was nostalgic, you know, to see what it was like then. And uh, and, I, and I thought it had power, you know. Yeah, it for had, sure. It had got to me. It had got to me. So it's, it's not, I wasn't that unusual that, it, that other people are not going to be attracted by that. Right. And, and I found that to be the case. And it wasn't, it wasn't, it didn't take a heartbeat for or, you know, to realize that uh, that I'd got something really up my sleeve there, you know what I mean? Yeah, it, and there wasn't a whole lot of other art being created like that at the time, was there? Not really. There was in England, actually, but it was more um, the sailing vessels like the barges, like the sailing barges that, uh, that went up and down the Thames River, and... Uh, they weren't really uh, that attractive, and uh, but it was it was my uh, passion for painting architecture as well. Yeah. As well as the ships, and, and that it was associating the sailing era with the architecture, you know, and uh, that did it, you know, that really did it. <laughs> I 
I usually go to the site that I've, uh, all these paintings I've done, I've been to all the cities and very carefully gone through all the records of what buildings were there then. I mean, for instance, you go to Cincinnati, and right in front of you on the waterfront there is, is the Roebling Suspension Bridge, which, which Roebling built before he built the Brooklyn Bridge. Okay. No, it's sitting there right in front of you. And it, it even looks like it. And uh, so it, it's, you know, all you've got to do is to take all the new nonsense away, you know, all the new buildings, and put the, what was the proper buildings back that were there before. Since photography came in, everything has been recorded. So, and even the old etches, the old etches were the ones that really excited me because they, they did it, and they had the etchings in the newspaper and, that, and that's how people got to know what places were like before uh, photography, you know. Okay. So that, so they, that, and they all, they all exist today. You can go to the uh, libraries and uh, the New York Library, which is on 42nd Street, I think. Fifth Avenue and 42nd Street yeah. comes to mind. That has a huge room. Of, of an area where they'll bring bring you um, uh, 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 copies of old etchings of Cincinnati, and uh, you know you can look through them and find exactly what you want. Oh, interesting! Yeah, I remember you talking about all the research you went that went into all your paintings. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and it's a lot of work, by the way. Yeah. I, and and it, it's so it's. It's not something that an, an art student would ever want to do, you know. I mean, I'm just a nutcase, you know, I, because I, I wanted to do, make, bring the scene back to life of the sailing era. Yeah. So all I had to go back, I had to go back 100 years, you know. Well, the buildings were still there 100 years ago, in most cases. And, um, and so it's, it, it's, not, it's not that... Uh, Big a deal, really, and for me it wasn't. And um, the more I did it, the more excited I got, and the better I did it. <laughs> so you you would research for for let's say I guess the spring and summer, and then you would bring the your research back to your studio in the winter time and finish finish them off then. That type of thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. So a lot of travel in the spring and summer when it's nice out, and then. Okay. No, it's it, you can't you can't beat it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but I think people today, you know, they they do very well with with uh, you know the 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 American Society of Marine Artists, which I helped to uh, start, uh, that uh, is functioning beautifully now, and it's got some really great uh, people. In it, and uh, you know that they, they see what success that I've had, and so it's it's uh, something that uh, you can put bread on the table with, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Are you still involved with the Lime Art Academy? The, the Lime, yeah. No, I was very involved in that. In fact, we built um, a big studio with our own uh, with our own money. I'm sure that's be, being used today. Still, it's a, it had a, several big studios in it. You know, it's quite a big building. Oh, there are good people there, and uh, but I love the look of what I do. I'm doing one right now, by the way. I'm doing you know, another painting of New York. Oh, cool. And uh, I've got um, I'm looking right down South Street to the end of it, and there are cirrus clouds above that have. Uh, in the moonlight, and um, they're all positioned so that your eye goes to the buildings, or it, it takes they take your eye. The pattern of of a sky will take the eye this way or that way, or bring into focus more of what you're trying to do. You know, right? 
I remember in one of your videos you said, learn how to paint skies because they take up two-thirds of your painting usually. <laughs> well, the, it's a, lot of, a lot of the painting is, is the sky in, in what I do. Yeah. But when you put a, a, a clipper ship right at the wharf with a clipper ship boom coming across the street, yeah. and then you fill the street with um, traffic, you know, horses and carts, this is in the evening when they're all winding down and they're going to bed, you know. Oh, I'd love to see it because oh. your, your South Street paintings are really iconic. Yeah, yeah. I've always loved them. They really, they really, uh, uh, I, I'm very, I'm very happy to see that they're, they're still well received, you know. Yeah. 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 And, and your moon paintings are very popular. It's moonlight that really I like the best because, uh, it's, um, it's the artificial light mixed in with the moonlight is, uh, it's a winner, you know. <laughs> yeah, it really, it really is. It's beautiful, and you handle it so well. Exactly what I'm looking at right now, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm very fortunate to have concentrated on this, and, uh, and it, it's really worked, you know. Yeah. So do you, do you find that the art world goes up and down in terms of sales and galleries and that sort of thing? I don't know what uh, I would, how I would answer that. Uh, I just do what I can and uh, what I know I, I can win with. Yeah. You know? And once you've got that going, um, you've got a, a real winner. Yeah. And so you need to keep doing that. Uh, there's no reason to stop, and uh, and I love it because it it evokes uh, a lot of pleasurable uh, feelings, you know, about the old days, and uh, and this one I'm doing at the moment. Yeah, I'm going to have to show it my dealer, and uh, when he comes to Palm Beach uh, next week. Do you do you still have your studio in Boston Harbor? No, I don't. Um, I see it regularly. Uh, it's right on uh, Lewis Wharf, and um, it's not on Lewis Wharf. It's on Union Wharf, Union Wharf. Uh, and uh, it was a townhouse at the end of the wharf. And that was a perfect location for me. And um, so we had two galleries. We had one gallery right on the same wharf. That's when we were selling prints quite a bit print work, you know, and uh, so that flew very well here, too. Yeah. That, that was all started from being in London and seeing other people doing very well with it, and, um, and uh, you know, and uh, I, I always remember getting into prints, uh, limited edition prints, uh, and, uh, and I was... Uh, living in Darien still at that same house and, uh, and I bought an ad in uh, and I designed the ad myself uh, in, and a, a third page a third of a page bleed in Smithsonian and uh, I paid 10000 for it believe it oh, can you believe wow. it wow paid that much for an ad but anyway it wow. was very well designed and very very and quite thought well thought out and I had three little pictures, and you know, whoa, geez, did we get ever, ever get killed in the rush, you know? Wow. <laughs> We've got a colossal amount of people um, wrote in for those. And uh, so that was another thing, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained, you know? That's but, right. Yeah. 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 For sure. What, so what kind of advice would you give to young students who are considering a career in arts, uh, wanting to do something uh, in painting, but they're getting resistance from maybe their family, saying you need to have a career that's a little oh, more stable? Well, I, had I had that. I mean, I, I, the, the thing that my dad said regularly was, come up, you know, when I was a kid, when I was uh, 10, let's say 10, uh, I was I 
was, according to my brother, who who died uh, a few years back in Malaga, Spain, uh, he, when I was with him last, he told me that when I was six, I was drawing all the time. <laughs> yeah. So that says something, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. See, I was, I, I couldn't put a pencil down, and I was, I, I and, and this tells me now that I had the thing that you have to have to, to become, you have to have extrasensory uh, uh, visual perception uh, and a little bit more than that and you have to be born with it. You can't, it can't come to you unless you get to the point where you're drawing all the time at the age of six, you know. Yeah. You, there's something going on that you, that's very unusual there, and uh, and it's 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 encouraging such a, a student, such a young man or woman. Uh, it's encouraging them at that point that will that will is almost import, as important as anything else because it, it, because it, you might lose it. And yeah. My dad. He used to come up, you see, he say, you're never going to put bread on the table with that kind of work. You know, he was a pharmacist with boots, chemists in England, and he had a wonderful uh, managership in Derby, at the main store in Derby, pronounced Derby, yeah? Um, yeah. Pronounced, pronounced Derby, or spelled Derby, yeah. Right. And he, uh, he, uh, he, he he was only saying that because he and, and all his uh, friends, the boots, and the, in the management field, and, and all the the main people in town that he knew, and he didn't know a lot of, them, uh, uh, and they uh, that was their thinking that uh, it, it could lead to a, a, a kind of a downhill slide into a bohemian kind of existence uh, uh, from which there was scant recovery, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he, he was actually trying to help me to get off it before it took me down the, the tube, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I can quite understand, it's quite, quite understandable and very honorable for him to do that. But what he didn't know had got this thing by birth, you know, that, that, that I, I, I was in, in some way have a special attachment to it. And yeah, it was in your blood. It needed developing. It didn't need discouraging. Are your uh, Worldscape uh, videos still available? The series, uh, I, I'm, uh, we don't advertise it anymore, but, uh, and, you're not going to believe this. They actually, I think PBS threw it away. What? When they were, they threw away the master after it was over for the second run. Oh they my! Give it two runs, but they threw away the master because uh, they were downsizing at at, a, at, a, at an office in uh, Hartford, I think, or or somewhere there. They were they. The PBS was at Hartford then. I, I can't be accusing them of this now uh, and r rabble rousing that. Uh, I, I don't know, um, but that's what happened. They threw it away. Oh no! And they didn't bother to to reach out to you to see if you wanted it. No, they didn't. They didn't come to me at all, and they thought that it was their thing and that they'd done it, whereas we'd paid for most of it. You know. And, uh, but it was too late then. That, that really hurt. <laughs> that is a shame, John. Well, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm not, not going to be here much longer. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got a short amount of time. Maybe you need to uh, go re record them all. That would be fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> I know that a lot of people would love it. The joy that John has for his work is contagious. 
And it was a great delight to hear all the wonderful stories that he has. And I hope to have another conversation with him to continue that. John's a true inspiration. And one of the lessons I learned from him was not to paint for the market, but to paint what you love, devote yourself to that, and you will find a market for it. He's done that for almost 80 years. John's work is sold through Kensington Stobart Gallery, which is located in the historic Hawthorne Hotel in Salem, Massachusetts. You can find out more about them at www.kensingtonstobartgallery.com. I learned from the Kensington Stobart Gallery that they do possess the DVD masters to both of John's Worldscape series, and they continue to manufacture them. They can be purchased through the gallery, and I highly recommend you do that. John has also established the Stobart Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization whose purpose is to help support young emerging artists who paint from life in the form of grants. You can find more information about the Stobart Foundation and apply at stobartfoundation.org. You will find links to the Stobart Foundation and the Kensington Stobart Gallery in the show notes. Thank you for joining us in this episode of the Schaefer Creative Podcast. You'll find more about us at our website, at schafercreative.studio. Music is by Lee Rosevere.